Um, so before I get into my history of working at museums, I want to um, just get right into the piece and talk about that piece because um, there's a lot to unpack with this piece, so I'll probably run over the 10 minute line if I, so yeah, just uh, looking at it if I get too long. But, um, so this piece, start just thinking about it formally, um, you can see there's just um, rebar sticking into um, this shape of the internal structure of the skull, and so that internal structure uh, was taken from a medical model, um, just the silicone, a silicone mold applied directly to that. Um, and so as you can see, um, the mold is slowly being ripped apart by the um, weight of the rebar pressing into it. So bit by bit over time, it will just keep ripping it until um, the entire thing falls apart. Um, but I think um, the thing that I want to get across with this um, goes back to my childhood because um, this piece is entitled Aneurysm Amphora and um, it's one of three parts. It's a triptych um, where you have this piece which um, is on one side and then uh, as you can see on these images here there's a series of panels across the wall and then um, a concrete, a two concrete bricks with the um, with, it, with the imprint of this silicone mold inside of it. So um, the way I want you to think about it is sort of like the pain of um, experiencing different types of headaches. Um, so for this one, it's like the, the back of the spine type of headache where it's right at the base of the spine feels like it's just ripping um, your <laughs> right into the back of your head. Um, and I think the most important thing to get across with this is um, that it's not just a physical pain, it's also an emotional pain, because um, back when I was a child, um, like a close relative of mine um, was uh, diagnosed with um, uh, brain aneurysm, and this, uh, this close relative would always tell me, like, oh, if you get me too angry, I'll, um, I'll have a brain aneurysm and die immediately. <laughs> uh, so it was like a shocking thing to hear when you were a kid because um, like obviously you wouldn't want uh, to get this person upset enough. So like uh, uh, she, this, this close relative would use that as, a, as sort of like a, a warning, not, uh, like if I was getting them angry, you know. <laughs> and so it was a bit of like a traumatic thing because um, like as a kid, it, having that type of responsibility like, or at least imagine, because I bet um, that this adult wasn't entirely serious about that, but um, uh, like at least when you're a kid, you take it very seriously anyways, even if it is just a, uh, a joke, so, uh, or like you know, partially in jest, but um, I also, when I, when I heard this all the time, I would think um, about the aneurysm not only as for this close relative, but also, I also internalized the idea that death was always present for me too, because it's a, um, a genetic uh, disorder that like um, has that component. So I imagine that my, uh, for myself, at any moment, I could um, just die from an aneurysm. Um, so this piece is like every time I would get a headache, I would also think maybe this was the end, because that's one of the symptoms of a brain aneurysm is that um, you'd have a headache and then that would be it, and then you'd be just be dead. <laughs> there wouldn't be much of a, a warning um, for it. Because um, essentially what a brain aneurysm is, is just a bubble um, that develops in, inside of your um, brain in one of the blood vessels, and it slowly expands over time because of the stress of um, blood pressure. And um, so it's just like a, a weak spot, essentially. Um, but the reason why this is in three parts is because um, that, so this part is, is, of course, that feeling of a certain type of headache. This, this wall section is the actual mold used to produce the bricks that um, are seen here. And so this is sort of talking about the idea of the, um, this imprint or this error or this failure was baked in from the very creation of this form. So it's, um, it's, it's sort of imagining this as being um, not something that uh, can be separated from the individual. It's a flaw that's baked within, you know. Um, 
So, I, like, it's, um, I, I try to imagine this piece as being really, uh, like you can almost see just from the physical way that it's, uh, that these rebar pieces are attached that um, you can uh, get that type of expression of the movement of, and, and of that pain. But, um, so, now that you've heard a little bit about this piece, I'll just move back towards um, my work at museums. So, I worked at the Institute of Contemporary Art um, back in 2021, and um, there I um, met Yolanda, who was the curator of the show, and we uh, spent a long time um, talking about the idea of um, like an exhibit to show um, work of uh, ICA members at the time, and now um, Yolanda has sort of expanded that into any museum staff in the Boston area. So um, I've been sort of connected to this, uh, this uh, um, exhibit idea from, the, from almost the beginning, you know. Um, this, so it's been a really um, fun to see how it's expanded and how Yolanda has made it so much, um, so much greater, you know. Um, but so at my time at the ICA, the thing that I found um, that was really different about it from a lot of the other jobs that I've had uh, was that, like, <clears throat> um, when you're there and you're just sitting in a room, or standing in a room, because you're not allowed to sit, standing in a room all the time, um, just always pacing around, uh, there's so much time to just think about things um, and get really lost in thought, because uh, the job I have as a visitor assistant, so you're always in those gallery spaces, just um, sort of contemplating things, because most of the time, People aren't trying to touch the art, so it's just a lot of downtime, I have to think. Um, and so my art practice really changed um, drastically over the time that I worked at the ICA, um, just spending so much time um, thinking about what it is I really wanted to say with my work, um, which even when I was an undergrad, I, I, I didn't really think too much about that. So it was a great sort of period in between um, undergrad and grad school for me to really sort of flesh out the ideas of what it is I needed to say. Um, and so now I work at the Museum of Fine Arts and um, I go to grad school at, in the um, uh, department at uh, Massachusetts College of Art and Design for Sculpture. Um, but uh, like the, the education job I have at the MFA um, is like not so much downtime as in the past because it's um, just working with students all the time, but um, I feel like really it was the ICA job that sort of um, changed my art practice the most in a lot of ways. But um, if you guys have any questions about my work, I'd love to um, answer any questions you have before um, we don't talk about anything else. If we have time. Are we over time now? <laughs> okay. Yeah, any questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> I think I uh, missed the beginning, but what is the material? So yeah, this is silicone rubber, so um, this, it's actually talking for um, for like a ceiling in houses and stuff like that. But um, I used, I started using it as a mold making material um, many years ago because it's far cheaper than um, the actual fancy um, silicone that you'd use for um, like the actual molds, but it works just as well. So. Um, it's really like one of those industrial materials, which is why I wanted to use it for this because it's, um, it's just such a like cheap industrial garbagey material that um, gets the job done, but it doesn't look very nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, I, I think there's also and there is something that looks nice about it because it is sort of translucent. That's the one thing I like about it that even that fancy mold making material doesn't have it. Um, it, the light comes through, so like even the shadow underneath, which I think is sort of good about this piece too, is you can see just a little bit of that light coming through. So, you know. Any other questions? I have a question maybe on a more personal level, but seeing I suffer with headache issues, I'm just wondering if you have that too. Yeah. You were saying how it's a heart attack thing, I'm just curious if you do and how do you feel with that? Yeah, I get headaches all the time. <laughs> I have a little bit of a headache right now, but um, yeah. Um, 
I think oftentimes as you stress and all that, uh, sometimes a little bit of Advil helps, but other times, no matter how much <laughs> of any pain and medication you take, doesn't really help too much. But um, and sometimes, you've had it, like your whole life. Yeah, yeah, pretty much my whole life. Yeah, it's curious. yeah. I think part, of, yeah, it's really always been associated with stress, but I get plenty of headaches even when I'm not stressed out. So who knows? <laughs> Maybe that's one of the qualities artists have. <laughs> because I always feel 